We didn't have money to pay for our tickets from Samarkand to Kermane. We had been sleeping for three days under the sky at the train station, and we ate. Oh my God, I don't want to talk about what we had to eat, never mind. So eventually, we said that we had to go to Kermane or we would die here. It would be our end. They told us that transports were ready to leave, and we knew we had to get them. So we got on the train, and I talked to a Russian soldier who was a guard. I went to him, and I told him that my family and I, we had to get to Kermane. We didn't have any money. We couldn't pay for our tickets. I asked him for help because without help, we were going to die. There was no other chance. There was nowhere for us to go except to Kermane. We didn't know what else to do, and there was nobody we could ask for help. He said, don't worry, I'll help you. He looked for a, what is the name, ticket guard. When he saw one coming, he hid us under the benches, here and there, and this way we got to Kermane. This is why I think about him very often. I am indebted to him. He saved our lives. I don't know what we would have done, what would have happened to us. We couldn't walk that far. We didn't have the money. If you don't have money, who wants to help you? But he helped us enormously. In Kermane, my mommy was in terrible despair because we hadn't seen my oldest brother since he had helped us into a boat in Pithorodek and sent us down the river. He told my mommy that he was returning to take another of our friends to the boats, and that was the last time we had seen him. Later, in 1946, I learned that he had somehow returned to Poland and died there. Until then, we didn't know what happened to him. My second brother was in the army in 1939, and he escaped to France and England through Hungary. We didn't know what had happened to him either. And we had to fill in the papers. My mommy, she was really in deep, deep despair. They didn't want to take us to the transport. We were told we couldn't go. Transports were leaving and we waited and waited and waited because we didn't have the proof that somebody from our family was in the army. My mommy was in such despair, worrying about what would happen to us there. Eventually, we found a man from the same settlement in East Poland. He was an assistant to a colonel in Kermane. We were in the camp in the desert, in the tents, so my mommy and I went to visit this man to ask him to certify that both my brothers were in the army and that we could join the transport as an army family. Only those families were allowed to leave Siberia. So we went, and he gave us this certificate, and for the first time, he gave my mommy some meat, corned beef from a can, and a little bit of wine. I ate this corned beef. I did not try the wine, I was too young. I know he gave a little bit of wine to my mother. We returned to our camp, so happy. Mommy cut our hair because of the lice, and she said, Children, tomorrow we will have enough to eat. We will have everything we need. And that night, she got terrible pains. She screamed and screamed. Daddy was asking her, What is happening to you, Mary? I couldn't sleep. I heard it, and I was thinking, What is wrong with my mommy? What is wrong with her? We had to walk five miles in the desert sand with Russian guns pointed at us to get to the train and to freedom. And what happened, nothing worse could have happened to me. I had to go through. She couldn't walk at all. I was with her because Daddy was carrying our things, and I had only one sister then because my second sister was so sick, dying. So I walked with my mommy. I said, Mommy, keep walking, the train will leave in a few minutes. She was shaking, shaking a little, and she fell again, and she, she walked a few steps, and she fell. She stayed there. She stayed near the train. I, I didn't want to leave her. I knelt down next to her in the sand, and nobody was around. It was the last transport. They closed all the cars. 
There weren't any doctors. We couldn't find anybody. I was wiping the sand from her face. She was unconscious, and I was screaming, Mommy! The train started to move, and Daddy screamed, Hella, get in! and caught my hand. I was screaming, I am not going! I am not going! I won't leave her here! It was like this. If you couldn't walk by yourself, they didn't take you on the transport. So she stayed there, and I... This is terrible. This is for me the most terrible thing. She was waiting for so long for us to be free, and she stayed on the sand. She was laying there, and if the hyenas... And I still think about her lying there in the sand. So we got to the Krasnovodsk, and there my second sister got sicker. She could only lie down. She wasn't moving, so I brought her a little water from the Caspian Sea in a meat can. She said, give me some water, Helu. And she was fainting, so I went back again. And there wasn't much water left in the can, and I poured it onto her chest. My second sister was also sick, also laying down. But she could walk, so when the time came to board the ship, it wasn't as if you could take a later boat if you were sick. No, the ship was leaving, and you had to go. So my sister, who was the most sick, had to stay behind. I took the healthier one under my arm so she could lean on me, and I told her, Hanyu, hold on to the hedge and on to me. She was tall, but she was like a skeleton and so thin. And slowly, slowly, we got to the ship. We entered and collapsed on the deck immediately from exhaustion from all we had gone through. We were so weak. I had collapsed near a wheel with oil. When I woke up, I was all covered with oil. And a man said that if I had turned onto my other side while I had been sleeping, I would have slipped into the hole with the oil. They used the worst, very old ships to transport us. Cargo ships that weren't meant for people. So on the ship, I was with one sister and my daddy. When I woke up, when we got to the shore, somehow I was alone. They took them to the hospital. I didn't even know when. I don't know even today what happened to my sister who was left behind in Siberia. There was no opportunity to take her with us. The Russians forbade sick people from joining the transport. My other sister would also have remained there if it weren't for my help. So I was alone. I was in such despair because a few days ago I had my family, nine people. I had my mommy, I had this and that. Two younger sisters were in an orphanage in Samarkand. Mommy put them there to prevent them from dying of hunger. She learned that there was an orphanage and she put them into it. They were also terribly sick. It was in Samarkand. The rest of us stayed in the Kalhas, but she learned about this orphanage where they always feed the children, so that was better for them. So I was in Palavi by myself. Nobody was there for me. Oh, yay. I was terribly worried and asked all the time if the orphanage was coming, when they would come from Samarkand. I was told that they would come in two days and that I could see my sisters, that they were there. I was so worried about what I was going to tell them about our mommy, how I would explain that I was alone when they saw me. So the orphanage came. They ran towards me and immediately started asking, where is our mommy? Where is our mommy? I, I told them. They were in such despair. What could I do? And then their caretaker, a woman, a tutor who brought them, she told me to join the orphanage, that I couldn't be alone. Oh, what that was for me, it was... It's so hard to say because I was terribly afraid of the orphanage. I had a family and suddenly I was in an orphanage. I couldn't believe it and I screamed and cried. 